in this discussion, in this part of the dua of Imam Zain al Abdin alayhi salam, we discuss one of the greatest dangers that could fall upon a person, that could afflict a person, and that is the disease of conceit, the disease of self admiration and pride and arrogance and regarding oneself as greater than other people and being very proud of the accomplishments that a person has accomplished in this life. And this is a negative trait, a vice which is referred to as ujb, where a person is basically very pleased with what they have done. And as we will see, this is not from the qualities of the believers. This is not from the qualities of a mu'min. Because a mu'min, a believer, they always see themselves that they have shortcomings towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They always see that they have shortcomings towards others. The moment you feel like you are accomplished and you have done enough, then that means that you're being arrogant and that means you're being full of pride and that could lead to destruction. Ujub, Ujub is the beginning, is the first step of being arrogant. Someone who's arrogant, they look at themselves better than, better than other people. And their attitude shows that. And the way they live their lifestyle shows that. But what is the first step? How does it start? It starts with self-admiration. When you come and you see, oh, I've done a lot. I've prayed, I've fasted, I've given this much charity, I've made this much money, I drive this car. That's all ujub. That's all being conceited and regarding oneself as greater than other people. So Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, in this beautiful dua, he says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Once again, he begins each, each dua, he says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad before it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa la tarfa'ni fi nasi darajah illa hatattani inda nafsi mithlaha. He says, O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and his family. And raise me not a single degree with people unless you have lowered me an equal amount within myself. Meaning that in the eyes of people, if I'm raised, if people are respecting me in the eyes of people, I want myself to bring myself down and humble myself with humility and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is... We don't find anyone talking like this. You don't find anyone doing a dua like this. Other than the school of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Where he says, when you raise me in the eyes of people, I want you to also, just as you have blessed me by raising me in the eyes of people, I want you to bless me by making me look down upon myself and discipline myself. Where I don't say, yes, I'm great. People are saying, you're so great. Then that means I am so great then that will make me arrogant. That, so he says, وَلَا تَرْفَعْنِي فِي النَّاسِ دَرَجَةٍ إِلَّا حَطَتَّنِي عِنْدَ نَفْسِي مِثْلَهَا وَلَا تُحْدِثْ لِي عِزًّا ظَاهِرًا إِلَّا أَحْدَثْتَ لِي ذِلَّةً بَاطِنَةً عِنْدَ نَفْسِي بِقَدْرِهَا And then he says, and... Let there not occur any outward honor, Azza, in front of people, regarding people see this person as Aziz, people see this person as full of honor. He says, if people regard me with honor, I don't want that honor unless there has occurred an inner degradation of an equal, equal amount within myself. So he says, if I have the Azza in the eyes of the people, I want the dhill al batina, the inner degradation in myself, so that I don't get fooled by the titles that people are giving me. That sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows a mu'min, the person who has a pure heart, their soul is pure. Allah allows this person to slip once and twice so that they don't get too conceited and too full of pride 
where they say, I've never sinned in my life and I've done this and I've done that and I've, got, I've done this. And then that feeling, that attitude, it's worse than sinning and acknowledging that you've sinned and you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah does not encourage a mu'min to sin, but sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the protection that a person has and therefore they will fall into the sin. But because they fall into that minor sin, we're not talking about major sins, because they fall into that sin, then therefore they're going to say, Astaghfirullah, I did something wrong, I'm imperfect. Then that will bring them down to earth, that will make them humble, and it will bring them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the mu'min, the believer, the true believer, as soon as they sin, they go back to Allah. But the person who sins and does not go back to Allah, this person is not a mu'min. With the Ahl Bayt, we see that this is how they used to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amir al-Mu'mineen in Dua Kumail. وَأَنَا عَبْدُكَ الضَّعِيفُ الذَّلِيلِ الْحَقِيرِ الْمِسْكِينِ الْمُسْتَكِينِ This is Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the first to believe, the one who was the most pious, the one who was born in the Kaaba, the one who defended the Prophet. He says, وَأَنَا عَبْدُكَ الضَّعِيفُ الذَّلِيلِ الْحَقِيرِ الْمِسْكِينِ الْمُسْتَكِينِ if Amir al-Mu'mineen talks like that, then what should we say? This is the Mu'min, the true believer. They see that the more, the closer they are to Allah, they see that they have committed shortcomings. And this brings, up, brings us to a question. Why does Imam Ali, for example, speak like this? Why does the Prophet do istighfar? Why do the Imams, they cry as if they have committed a sin? The answer is they have not committed a sin. They have not done anything wrong. They are ma'soom. They are infallible. However, infallibility doesn't just mean someone who has not committed a sin. Infallibility means that they constantly grow and get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more you grow, then you realize that the more you grow in knowledge, you realize that you don't have enough knowledge. So therefore, they are apologizing to Allah. They're asking Allah for repentance, for forgiveness, for the shortcomings that they have had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they see that whatever they have worshipped, it's still nothing compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. This is the believer. Whereas the non-believer, they go and they pray two rak'ahs and they say, Alhamdulillah, I'm done. But Amir al muminin he used to pray 1,000 rak'ahs and he would still feel as if he has shortcomings towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why he says, Astaghfirullah. This is why he says, Anal abdul faqir al-dhalil al-miskeen al-mustakeen. This is why Rasulullah does istighfar. This is why Imam Zayn al-Abdeen and all of the Imams, they do istighfar. This is one reason. Second is to teach people, to teach people how to do dua. And third is to discipline the soul. Discipline the soul so that it teaches us that if the, if the imams of the Ahl-Bayt are doing dua like this, then what should we do? How should we regard ourselves? Unfortunately, some of us, as soon as we've done something good in our lives, we come and we act as if we have done a very big favor upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is a, another word that is used as riyah. Riyā is when you do something, not for the sake of Allah, but for the sake of other people. And this is why, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to discipline ourselves to do things for the sake of Allah and not for the sake of anyone else. And there's a way to discipline yourself. Now see the Imam, he says in a dua, raise me, and when you raise me in the eyes of people, lower me in the eyes of myself. It's easy to say things. But sometimes we have to translate what we say, our du'as into action so that it will be a part of our life, so that it will be accepted. So what are some things that we could do to raise ourselves in the eyes of Allah and do good, but lower ourselves and work on our own humility and work on our own self-building? One is, for example, when you give sadaqah, when you give charity. It's recommended to give charity in two ways or at two times. To give it in public and to give it in private. Why is it encouraged to give it in public? Because when you give charity in public, you're encouraging other people to give. When you make a donation in public, you're encouraging other people to donate. 
This is one. But second, it's also encouraged to give charity in private, like the Imams of the Ahl Bayt. The Imams of the Ahl Bayt, they would carry a bag filled with bread and food and they would go in the middle of the night distributing food to the needy. No one would know about this. Then once the Imam passes away, people would realize that this is what the Imam used to do. Now, why is that? Why is it recommended to give charity in private? Because when you give it in private, you're disciplining yourself. You're teaching yourself that this is not for other people, but this is for God. I'm doing it only for Allah and I don't want anyone to notice. So they're both good and they're both good qualities. Another is prayer. It's recommended to pray in the mosques and recommended to pray out in public. When you're outside, when you're wherever you are, pray. And it's good to pray and show people that yes, I do pray and I'm proud of my religion, I'm proud of my faith and I'm going to pray. But then there's another prayer that is done in private. There's another prayer that's done in the middle of the night when everyone is asleep. When no one is watching, that is the prayer that you do to discipline yourself. To say that I'm not doing it for anyone else, but I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, these are some of the ways that we can discipline ourselves. And then the Imam alayhi salam continues, and I will conclude with this, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, wa matta'ni bihudan salih, la astabdilu bihi wa tariqati haqqin, la uzigu anha wa niyati rushdin, la ashukku fiha. The Imam, he asks for three very important qualities. He says first, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Oh Allah, bless Muhammad and Al Muhammad. And then he says, Wa matta'ni bihudan salih la astabdilu bihi. And give me the ability to enjoy sound guidance which I will not be which I will not replace it with any other not so sound guidance. Meaning, oh Allah, I need to be guided. And this is something that every Muslim, anytime you pray, you say, Ihdina Salat al Mustaqim. We all need to be guided. Don't ever come to the feeling where you say, Alhamdulillah, I'm already guided. Alhamdulillah, I'm already achieved. Alhamdulillah, I'm already a mu'min. I'm a believer in the Ahlul Bayt. I believe in the Quran. I believe in this. We should never have that feeling. We should always ask for increase in guidance. Because who knows? Maybe there will come a time in your life where that guidance will be taken away from you. And anything good that you've done in your life, it's due to the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So he says, وَمَتَّعْنِي بِهُدًا صَالِحْ لَا أَسْتَبْدِلُ بِهِ Something that I will not change my path. I want to remain on the hidayah. I want to remain on the path of guidance. This is one. وَطَرِيقَةِ حَقٍ لَا أُزِيغُ عَنْهَا you guided me, you've given me the map, but I need someone to show me the way and a path of the truth from which I will not swerve away. Meaning that just as I need the guidance from God to tell me you, do, you should do this and you should do that, but I need someone to show me the way. I need someone to take my hand and guide me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah does when you pray. God is taking by your hands and bringing you to pray. When you're fasting, when you're going to hajj, whatever good that you've done, it's Allah that's gravitating you, that's pulling you towards that true path. وَطَرِيقَةِ حَقٍّ لَا أُزِيغُ عَنْهَا وَنِيَّةِ رُشْدٍ لَا أُشُكُّ فِيهَا And an intention of right conduct in which I have no doubts. So here, the Imam asks for three things. One is guidance. Second is showing the pathway and leading the path. And third is to make my intention pure. I'm on this right path. I'm being guided. But my intention should always be pure. This is only for Allah. I'm not doing it for this person and that person. 